We rolling? We are, yeah. Welcome back. Um, to this another is, heinous episode. We've got some haunted news for you guys. We walked into Lee's uh, chateau, if you will, today. And we, and we will. And he goes, we I just passed the- a kidney stone. Yeah. So... He delayed us filming for an hour because he said he had work to do. And we said, no problem, Lee. We have stuff to do, too. It's all good. Turns out he's been plopping fucking stones out of his out pee hole. Pebbles have been plopping. So our boy, our boy is not, our boy is, he's chugging along today. He's got a throbbing penis hole. I never said I had work to do. I just said I need another hour. <laughs> well, I assume. Because <laughs> I know how busy you are. I just said I need an hour. And Lee was fighting... <laughs> For his life on the toilet. Now, that's been giving not birth. unusual. That's that's a weekly occurrence. That's not <laughs> unusual. It's filming day, so we know that you're going to be in that bathroom leaving us a little present. But <laughs> And today it's stones. Yeah. But today it's boulders billowing How out. do you feel right? How do you feel right now? I mean, not great. So that's Gabby Brussels, she said that you're supposed to be in the hospital. I don't think so. Yeah. I know that there are a lot of cases where you do go to the hospital for kidney stones. This does seem... Probably not in all cases, but I know that in some, because the pain gets too great. But that also could just be men being little pussies. Are we talking pussies. like yeah, a grain of men. sand? A grain of yeah, sand men. tinkling out? Or are we talking like How big these things look a in? sea monkey size? I don't know. I didn't see it. I, all I know is I Do you I know only, that it passed? I he knows don't, that the I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. All I know is that while I was peeing... It felt like something more than pee came out. Oh my god! And it hurt. Stop. Stop. A lot. Stop. Stop. It was very. It was very painful. And somebody is also screaming at. They're listening to this and they're going, "Go to the hospital! This is this is a big deal." And you know that some people listen to this podcast while they're eating, and Lee's like, "It was big and it really hurt, and it was passing something, and it felt like almost like it was moving, crawling." You know what? You know what's crazy? Yeah, is that people and I actually dated a guy that had this have kinks for having things stuck down their penis holes. Yeah, sounding. It's, it's called sounding. Which yeah. ex was that, or was it just when you dated? You know, you know him. You know him. You know what's fascinating? I was thinking about this the other day when I was talking to our third roommate, Kate. <sighs> Lee, we can come back to the pebbles in your in your. Um, no, we don't pussy. have to. In your, <laughs> in your little. Pussy. No, we do. We can talk no, about your little do. pebble, Lee. Pussy. Um, all right, after this. But here's the thing. I and Lee, thank you so much for still being a strong king and for recording this podcast. And that's on not going to the hospital. And that's on a real fucking man, ladies. Okay. But anyways, um, I was thinking about this the other day um, when I was talking to, yeah, like I just said, Kate. And I think it's just so uh, comical in a dark way of the things that you find out about your friend's partners when they get out of the relationship. Yeah. And you can be like, oh, yeah, he kind of yelled, but, you know. Yeah. Hey, she loved him, so whatever. They, and then they, you're like, oh, yeah, not only did he yell, he liked it when I shoved, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Spikes ends. <laughs> Stiletto heels up his penis hole. Yeah. The things that we keep a secret while we're dating somebody because out of fear of, like, revealing too much to our friends because you know that our friends are going to use it against us if we ever, like, we got into a fight. They're going to be like, he likes stilettos being shoved up his fucking penis hole. Yeah, the fuck are you? You can't get for? back to you can't get back together with him. So we do withhold information. Mm-hmm. Now, with this ex, did you ever shove stuff? No, in his penis it's a good hole? question. No, I did not. I did not. And you want to know what? And I, I would was, not. I'm happy you asked it, but I, yeah, I was assuming you didn't. No, I did not do that. Yeah, um, no. that is a fucking true nightmare. Mm-hmm. Love and light to all those that like things. I would have sh- been too curious. I feel like I would have. Okay, Lee. Well, let's boundary. find let's find you a guy to stick. Well, I'll give him I'll give you his number. <laughs> or a lass. Well, we might need to stick something up Lee's to well, get the rest of the pebbles Isn't there out. a thing where women do put things up their urethras, up their pee holes? We have urethras, right? Women have urethras. Yes. Another episode of us not knowing a goddamn fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> women have Do I need to pull up a diagram? No, we do. We have like anatomy. tiny pee holes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes and I Yes, yes. Okay, why are you blinking like that? Because I, I, because I'm having a physical reaction to this. Well, um, because my friend who uh, works in the ER said that women, or was it on this podcast? It was either on this podcast, or I had a friend. Or it's on TikTok. Yeah, actually, yeah. You're like, these my days, friend on TikTok. Okay. Yeah. Women, there was a woman who like was ended up in the ER because she had shoved something up her fucking urethra and it like got stuck and started rotting. Okay, well, now you just pissed me off. What the fuck was it? I don't know. I don't know if it was this podcast. It started was... rotting? Yes. What could you possibly fit up there? You can fit things up there. I don't know. What's so gross? I don't know if that's I real. I saw a TikTok where is. a guy had a seed in his cavity in his tooth, and it started growing. Really? Yeah. That's like that episode of Rugrats when they eat the watermelon seeds. 
it is. And like they start growing watermelons I in their belly. I love drug rats. Drug rats, rats is a or rat. the TikTok the of when the guy eats the slugs. Throw yeah. back to like a year. Was ago. that the one that died? Yes, that he was ate died. a fuck ton of slugs. He ate one slug. Oh, yeah. there's there's a few yeah. videos, but yeah, okay. So that I, yeah, there is a guy that ate one. And it was slug, in Australia, right? And it was a really poisonous slug. No, it wasn't even that it was poisonous. It's just because they have so much like fucking bacteria. Wait, what? And it just like it was the ex- poison. It just like excu- it ex- excuted the mucus. It, yeah. And yeah. then so he like, was like, we're, 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 we're moving past something. You fucking so. heard me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now you guys, you guys are me, Uncle P. Yeah, well, he literally hits us and throws Scoot. his pebbles. Yeah, did you hear him go, he, he, you fucking heard me. Yeah, you fucking heard me, you <laughs> bitch. It's funny when women do it, because it's like, ah, oh, but when men do it, you're like, oh, there's something no, there's really an, dark there. Lee has anger and resentment towards us, but here's the thing. Don't fucking hit me. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I fucking dare you. But here's the thing. Um, you did say excuded, and I just want to, I would wear excuded on, <laughs> on a t-shirt. And that's all I was trying to back. We were about to move past you saying excluded. Excluded the mucus. You excluded. Wow. What's the word? Why would we know? (laughs) Wait. Yeah, wait, why would we know? What's the actual word? It doesn't even matter. Exude. Exude. No, exude. Like when you exude, you're exuding. You guys, an energy. No, no, no. We're not doing this again. (laughs) No, I know. No, no. Because I don't think exuding is the word. There's excrement. No, like exude, like she exuded. Exude is the word. Exude is the word. But can, does exude happen physically with, like, can you exude poison or is exude just like an energy? This podcast is so fucking embarrassing. This is like actually fucking embarrassing. (laughs) This is our digital footprint. No, because I can see it. I know what you're trying to say. It's not excuded. What's that? He loves this. Okay, okay, enough. Enough. <laughs> he loves that. It's his little thing now. I know. Here, hold on. Wait, Lee, look it up. Word with an E that means... It's ex... ex- is it not exude? I mean, is, I don't it's know if exude. exude. Does exude work, though, in this context? Exude. Dis- discharge. Exude. Exude? Okay. Discharge. Moisture or smell. Yeah, okay. Slowly and steadily. Okay. What's excrement? Shit. That's yeah. That's leftover. Fe- that's feces. Yeah. Okay. Human excrement. Excrement. Do we want to hear it? Couple or a couple of scholars. Exude. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. You're welcome. English is our first and only language. If anyone was wondering, I don't. Um, I don't like how much energy Lee has after passing this fucking kidney stone. Well, I kind of do. I kind of. I feel like he got his confidence back. Yeah, he did. He, <laughs> something he got. He got something out of him today. He got something that had been sitting in there. It, yeah. It, it excluded. Been been yeah. weighing you down. Hey, guys. We are here today because we want to tell you about Next Evo. Next Evo is the best CBD brand we have literally ever heard of. The best. It helps you sleep and it helps you de-stress. Yeah. And it does. And I there's nothing I love more than uh, not feeling stressed and getting a good night's sleep. And guess what? Next Evo is the most clinically studied brand on the market. It really does. It has a lot of clinical trials. And that's pretty good. I want to know that the product I'm taking has been studied a lot by if, people who know what they're doing. Amen. And if you don't believe us, that's literally on you. And it's fast acting. So, you know, you take it and it's absorbed pretty quickly and then you're feeling good. Because we only want the best for our little honks. So true. Mm-hmm. I don't know. How do you feel after taking them? Honk, when I tell you, I don't feel a single ounce of stress in my goddamn body. I love that. And also, here's the thing. Um, there is no THC in CBD. So for those of you who do not like the effects of marijuana, you're not going to get them from CBD. They're simply just kind of a de-stressor to help you sleep. It's Mother Nature's relaxation center. Yeah, we've got, I don't know, there's gummies, there's little, uh, there's a melatonin. One, there's, okay, one. there's different kinds, okay? There's there's stress CBD complex. Yeah. And it's a tro- they have a tropical f- uh, fruit flavor. Yeah. And then they got sleep support CBD complex, which is a strawberry flavor, and it has melatonin in it, okay? So if you don't want to sleep and you got some work to do and you don't want to be stressed out, you're going to just take the the... You're gonna take the stress CBD complex. Yeah. You got some sleep. You want to. You have a big day tomorrow. You want to wake up. Yeah. Then guess what? You're gonna take your sleep support CBD complex. Yeah. You're it's getting really a good. Simple. N- and the thing is, if you're getting a good night's sleep, you're feeling good all day long. So we highly recommend this product. And that's on highly. Now listen up. Okay. The uh, next Evo test products multiple times. So we told you that. And, that. and then we'll tell you again, just so y'all get it through your damn heads. And the only next uh, Evo uses uh, Smart Sorb CBD, proven to have 30 times better absorption in the next 30 minutes and four times the overall absorption as other products. So it's good, literally. Mm, so it's pretty good. Next Evo does its research as demonstrated by four clinical trials. No other CBD brand comes close. 
Not even. No, honey, they're fucking bombs. And Next Evo covers variety of CBD needs, stress relief, better sleep, or to boost your daily wellness. Here's the thing. If you want to upgrade your CBD, go to nextevo.com slash tea time to get 20% off your first order of $40 or more. That's 20% off $40 or more at next, N-E-X-T, E-V-O dot com slash tea time. Let us know how it works for you. And that's on that. I started my period. I have fucking horrific cramps right now. Uh, Okay, I'm sorry about that. What? What, Why'd you jump? I just remembered something that I wanted to talk about on here. What? What? You guys, people with fucking road rage need to calm the fuck down. Um, Okay. The other night I was with... Oh, yeah. Janine. If you know, you know. And we were on our way to go get my brother some stupid fucking cat food. And so we're, we're reversing out of the Jack in the Box parking lot. If you're a long-time listener, you already know that's the slap in the box parking lot. But um, we're reversing out of the Jack in the Box parking lot. And this guy in a big, huge, white um, Chevy truck rolls up on Janine's car and is maybe an inch away from her car. Just r- And then he puts his brights on. And so he may- and he gets so close to where she can't move because she was already in the process of backing up. It was a and scary then- video. You, you taped it. But yeah, because I, t- yeah, I was like, what the fuck is he going to do? And I was trying to like see if I could like get his license. Okay, whatever. But anyways, he's like he starts talking shit to her. She's like back up, back up, and then um, he finally ends up like he doesn't back up, but he just like drives over like the curb of the drive through kind of to to just like get around her. And as he's like going, he's like calling her a bitch and stuff. Anyways, I get his Psychotic. license cl- and he and he was slurring his words, and we're like, oh, you're drunk, and like he legit. And then he got even close. Oh, sorry, but before he drives like up and into the drive through. He gets even closer to her car and it was so fucking unhinged and insane. And then he like clearly, you know, he was like fucking wasted. Um, Anyways, we go, we continue on our, we go, okay, fuck him, whatever. We continue on our journey to go find the cat food. And as we're driving, we end up seeing him. Somehow he was like in front. Okay, no, not this ringing. Um, He ends up like being in front of us and we see him almost hit two cars and he's swerving. And he like almost like crashed into a car and then like got control of the wheel and then pulls into this gas station. So I fucking snitched on him. Good. And I fucking reported him. Because also don't fucking talk to her like that. Oh my God, I was so goddamn livid but it was so, so horrifying scary and then throwback to gabby's man when the like there was how many cop cars again four five oh, no 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 there were like 10 oh okay there good, were good, 10 good. cop cars that pulled john over for literally making just like a right like early yeah like he he made a right turn and they're like well what are you doing what are you doing because they had been profiling him before and then so then, yeah he didn't well the thing is he's, he didn't do anything they no made no he didn't do anything that he did. that, but that's the point yeah. i'm making so he like they they wasted all of our tax dollars on someone who's literally not doing fucking anything they just wanted to have like a fun night with their boys fucking with a civilian and then there's a guy who's uh Putting women in fucking danger, putting people and himself in danger, driving like a fucking maniac and being reckless with his car. And like he like we're lucky that he didn't crash right into her, but he came so close and was like being so malicious. And then there's like no cops around. I I got placed on hold when I called 911. Like where literally were the cops then? Like there were a thousand, it seemed like, in our neighborhood when John got profiled. Yes. But then when there's a drunk guy who's like trying to hit you, where are they? Literally, he was threatening us with his huge car and he could have just crashed into us. Like that's how unhinged he was. And it was really fucking horrifying. There's something deeply frightening about the primal rage of men. Literally, like when Lee just like fucking yelled at us. Yeah, it's true. Me. Excluded. Excluded. You yeah, heard I, I, I me. Yeah, I fucking said it. I'm like, okay, go get in your Chevy fucking truck and then we can talk. They're scary. Men are scary. <laughs> yeah. There's, men There's are no fucking rage. scary. No. They're really fucking scary. Primal rage. I know. What are you so fucking mad about? We have, we because he wants to, because you want to know what he's mad about because deep down he wants to be hunting because deep down all men just want to be out in the savanna hunting with their feet and or their fucking the- hands and they can't now they're they're confined to spaces where they have to jack off they're they're out of their all day. and that's why that's the primal rage and that that's also why they're always holding these fish they're like look at what i fucking caught for you yeah yeah that's, that's like the only time they get to hunt now yeah this is the primal rage of man yeah well maybe guys if more men could go this. could go hunt if you're vegan, maybe go hunt for your own berries. I don't know. Here's an idea. Why don't we put all men literally on one island filled with, I don't know, things to do. Well, and then they can go, they can go, they can go live on that island. What's that book of mice and men? Didn't they already try that? No, it's not Lord of, of mice the flies. and men. Lord of the Lord flies. Of the flies. <laughs> what the of fuck? Of mice and men. <laughs> About Lenny. Okay, Lenny. Yeah. 
Another, Hon- another. Honk is Loki giving Lenny energy. Okay, you wish. But here's the thing. No, Lee, don't play it again. Just stop. We, I, this is not going to be a segment. No, but it is for him now. I work with retards. Okay. <laughs> Lee. He loves it. I hate everything about this, but here's he the loves thing. it. Okay, so today we're doing Am I the Asshole? So instances where we've questioned, am I the asshole for this? I've been thinking I have a good one. I don't have any because I, I that's never been my story. Well, the one that I have is, is actually about you and you were the <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Can't be your face. <laughs> I haven't. It's just not my story. No, it's not my story. It's not your story. It's not your story. <laughs> my side, um, but it is, is everyone else's is... story about you. But that's okay. But <laughs> and that and that what and and what other people think of me? What other people think of me? None of my business. None of my business. And that's a beautiful way to not hold yourself accountable for the way that you treat people. <laughs> Are you guys listening? My side of the street, spick and span. Well. Everyone has a different version of clean. But anyway, while you think of one, I have one yeah. that I'm ready for. Please. Okay, so this one. Wait, so you are questioning if you're the asshole? You know you're the asshole? I'm questioning if I'm the asshole. Okay. I'm questioning. Okay, so I used to be friends with this this girl. We were friends for, she. we both have big personalities. You know, we love to see it. Um, we were friends for a few years, like very close. Um, as the pandemic happened, c- kind of grew apart. Um, then we became friends again, whatever. We started hanging out as like, you know, the pandemic was kind of like, you were okay to like hang out with people over the summer of 2021 or whatever. But, um, anyway, uh, we were out one night and we're all getting dinner and I'm going to be honest, I'd had some drinks. So I'm like a little bit, I'm like a little bit more loud. Oh, this story. This story. Okay. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're, I'm like a little bit loud. We're all having fun. It's like two in the morning. We're at Cantor's and I'm with several comics. I'm with, um, my former intern from my last podcast and then this friend and then like two people I don't, I don't know at the time. Um, but anyways, we're all inside and we're about to eat. And so we all have our masks off and she has her mask on and I'm sitting next to her and I'm like, I'm like, girl, like take your mask off. Like we're about to eat. And then she was like, no, no, I don't want to. And I, and this was obnoxious of me. Now this I know was wrong and it, that was stupid, but I, I just like snap, I didn't do it hard, but I snapped her mask. And so I was like, girl, come on. And then she goes, don't do that again. And I go, okay, whatever. And I, and so, and then I don't do it again. Then, um, we leave. She she asked my intern if she can give her a ride home. My intern's like, I ah, like you live really far away, and I'm gonna take Harper home because she lives like right here. And then she was like, Oh, okay. But she was like, I'll wait, like, we'll wait for you as you get your lift. She gets her lift. I don't see her again um for like a few weeks. In my head, every I wake up the next morning, like, okay, doodle do. I assume that we're fine. I end up seeing her at a show. Uh, the the friend whose mask I popped, I, I see her at a show, um, like probably like a few weeks later, and she doesn't talk to me. And I go, hey, doesn't look at me, doesn't Ish. talk to me. Um, then uh, as this time goes by, I like text her. I like try and say something to her. Doesn't respond to me at all. She just completely ices me out. Um, th- then I realize that she's like unfollowed me on everything. And I was like, oh, weird. Okay. And I felt kind of annoyed. And so I, I could have probably made up a little bit better, but I, I just was like, ew, fuck that. Like, such a hothead. I don't feel like dealing with this, whatever. Anyways, cut to, that was like at the beginning of the summer, cut to the end of the summer. And we are at our friend, he just ran his hour and we're at our friend's hour, um, at like the L sit or whatever. And again, I had some drinks, I want some mushrooms and we're partying. It's like a bunch of us. And, um, this guy I had been kind of flirting with is there and A lot of people like this guy. All right. Um, But anyway, so uh, he's there having a little flirt. She goes up to my my very close friend who was in town visiting and she kind of starts talking shit about me to my friend being like, oh, look at like Harper's getting crazy again. Like you're probably going to have to like come home with me because like she's just going to ditch you. She's just going to leave you. And he was like, no, she's not going to ditch me. Like I'm going home with her. Like she's having fun, whatever. And I knew she was doing this and it just pissed me off. And so I went up to that guy and I just like, and then we like just started like making out. We were like in front of like all of our comic friends and like, I didn't know that she had like a massive crush on him, but like, I like he's like a very like popular person in our comedy scene who a lot of people like. And so like, I just kind of assumed like, oh, this might piss her off. So then I made out with him. And next thing you know, classic move class, very tacky, but I was just kind of like classic move. Okay. So then a few weeks later, she 
comments on, or she, she makes a tweet about me calling me like a white bitch terrorist saying that like I I physically assault Lee to laugh but she, <laughs> that she that I physically assaulted her and that and basically making these grandiose claims and being like and now like my abusers on tour right now going across the country after doing what she did to me meanwhile I know that she's just mad because I kissed that dude. Yeah, and you popped her mask, and so she's annoyed. And, and so she's annoyed. And, and she, so and my question white, is, so she's like, of course, the white bitch wins again. And so my question is, was I the full asshole there, or did, or was she a bit of a fucking asshole? I'll or say is it this. A bit of both. I'll say this. As somebody in in Alcoholics Anonymous, this would be something you would have to apologize for, mm -hmm. undoubtedly. You would have to, even though you don't want to, you would have to make an amends. Well, here's the thing, Gab. Yeah. So I would make an amends. Yeah. I, I honestly would. I had, um, uh, my last sponsor told me, I, I'm not at the point where I need it, like, or where I am. Um, I'm making, you're not making I'm, I'm not yet. making it. Also, yeah. I have to restart my steps because I'm getting a new sponsor. But my former sponsor, I, I told her about this story. Yeah. And also, since that night that I got, like, like crazy too. Mm -hmm. I now don't drink like that mm -hmm. anymore. And especially ever since that night, I don't get drunk. I never got drunk around comedians like that ever again okay. because I was but, like, okay. But anyway, yeah. so when I was talking to her about, um, ab about this, she, she said the same thing. She's like, yeah, this is something you would make an amends for. And mm -hmm. I said, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But then I told her about how she has me blocked. And then she said, well, if someone has you blocked, then reaching out would be breaking their consent. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay. But I 100% would apologize. Yeah. So, yeah, in that case, you would, ha you are, you're the asshole. Okay. In your, in your own, because this is the thing what I've learned about making amends. It doesn't matter what they did. It matters how. Just my side. Your side. Because I have done this so many times where I've had people where I've been like, yeah, but look at what they did too. And my sponsor's like, it doesn't matter what they did. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if they called you a stupid fucking bitch and punched you in the face. It doesn't matter. You need to clean up your side of the street. So in your case, you would look only at what you've done and you have to then, you know, assess like cause and reaction. Like you, you caused and reacted to something mm -hmm. that caused and reacted and that, that caused and then she had a reaction to it too. Her side of the street, that's her thing. Doesn't she, that's, who gives a fuck? I have my own thoughts. But <laughs> you specifically, we're talking about you. Fuck, like, she's not in the picture. You would have to, you would, you play a part of being an asshole in this. Yes. Yes. And that's, that's something that I, like, again, like, I didn't come into this this story being like, I don't think I did anything wrong. I know yeah. that I did. I know that I was, I was shitty. And yeah. like, like a close friend or not, you shouldn't be touching people's face. Like I like, and if I, if I would, I, I would see red if somebody did that to me. Cause no. I don't like being like poked and touched. Yeah. If somebody did that to me, I would be like, are you fucking kidding me? I would see fucking red. And so I get her like, yeah. doing that. like to me, I don't really care. I'm like, okay, whatever. Right. But like, so like, I totally get it. Yeah. But I think I was just like annoyed. Cause I was like, I, yeah. I kind of just started like spinning out because like there was like little things going back and forth where I'm like, are you really just going to be fucking petty? Like we can't just like yeah. talk this out. And then I was like, well, fine. If you don't want to talk to me, then fuck off. Yeah. And then when she started like talking to my really close friend and kind of like, I felt like assassinating my character with my friend. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, well, fuck that. And then I just, I like kind of like leaned into the. Right. And on your end, that would be like entitlement and like self-righteous, like fear in a way. Mm -hmm. And then like it's it's a, an ego blah 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 so like yes there are there are parts of this where you are indeed the asshole yeah as the steps would show as the steps would show her side i feel the type of way about her and, side and, yeah but you and we're we, not gonna talk about that we're gonna say we're not gonna you, talk about that we can save maybe that for patreon or maybe another time but here's the yeah, thing but you, i yes but you and i have talked about this person before uh, privately and, and it's okay, and it's all okay. But yes, you know, you're an asshole. In this, okay. and you're an asshole in this season, and so. love and light to love and light to all. Love and light to all. But and we're taking accountability for ourselves right now, so that's that. And that's that. <laughs> and also, I will say, like you know, there were certain positives from that because I did it did force me to like you know with like certain yeah. like bottoms. You also 2021 and 
beginning of 2022 Mm -hmm. were crazy. 2021 also around this time, that's when I got into the relationship with Mm -hmm. that slap in the box guy. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just like, you know, like I was, I think 2021, that was like an emotional like low, but we've been going up since then. I got in a program. We've, but also it's great that you can talk about this, acknowledge your part and see like, yeah, you know what? I was a fucking asshole. Cause if you didn't, there'd be a much bigger problem at large. Oh, the fact that you can look at it and be like, yeah, it was obnoxious what I did. I was an asshole and I did this to like get one up on her. Yeah, it's asshole shit. Mm-hmm. And that's also okay. You're a human being. We are not, no, we are not fucking godlike. We all act like fucking assholes. We all d- say and do stupid shit. It's so, so fucking primal. It is very primal. I feel like it, it takes, yeah, like that extra, like, it, and that's like where like taking pause really comes mm-hmm. in. Because especially like, I mean, I still like, not to that extent, but like, I definitely still sometimes in arguments that can be kind of reactionary. And I really have to just like slow my roll, mm-hmm. just like breathe through. Because like, yeah, I feel like it's, you have to like communicate with your heart versus your ego. Because when you start communicating with like the ego, mm-hmm. it's just like, that's, that's weak. Essentially. Yeah, because your ego is coming. It's all fear based. So yeah. it's like everything that had happened that night between you and her ultimately breaks down to like fear, mm-hmm. you know? And it, and like, you know what? I could have commu- I could have just been like, well, I don't want to say too much because then it's going to give away who this person is. Yeah, but it's, it's, it doesn't I, matter. That's not important who this person is or who they are. But yeah, here's what I know to be true. You know, we did have a close friendship for many years. And I think she's talented and I truly, a hard truly, worker. yeah, she's a very hard worker, she's smart. She's a really smart, extremely girl. smart, extremely smart, beautiful. And I truly do like, I really hope the best for her. And, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people can change and I know I've changed a lot, so I'm not going to hold someone to the version of them I knew like a few years ago. And that's the thing is that we often keep people they kind of get crystallized in our we, minds. We crystallize people in our minds and we we make judgments and then we're like, this is how this person is. And then we're, we keep ourselves from being able to actually see somebody in their entirety when we've been like, now I have my mind made up. This person is like this, fuck them. And yeah. then you're not allowing that person to be somebody else. And maybe it's out of your own fear of like, because I think that the fear there is that like, maybe I'm actually wrong. Maybe this person isn't that bad, but now I've created this thing in my head that they are this bad and I'm going to feel like a fucking asshole when I realize that they're not, mm-hmm. you know, and we tend to do that with people. I think I was extra angry at her for a long time, too, because I think it was easier to do that than to admit like. Absolutely. And, and like, look, like this person and her like that I that I kissed, like to my knowledge, never had a thing or anything like that. And she yeah. had never like if, if one of my friends is like, hey, I, I like this person. I'm not going to go up and do anything with like, that's, that's gross. Mm -hmm. But like, was I knowingly, like, I I did know I was being kind of obnoxious and, Mm -hmm. and whatnot. And like that, that was just petty and, and immature, but also, you know, it is what it is. We grow, we live, we learn. It was a couple of years ago. And that's really that. You recently just did your amends list. I made my amends list. I haven't made amends yet. I have people on there that I'm very... Were there any, okay, so let me ask you this. When you were making your amends list, you, you did it with your sponsor or mm-hmm. solo? Sponsor. With your sponsor. Were there people on this list that were, are you surprised that they're on there? Or like, like when you were just like talking about my thing, were you like, were there any where you're like, I don't feel like I'm the asshole here. And was your sponsor like, okay, so that's interesting. So maybe you and your sponsor, maybe like making your amends, is like low key doing this with like a sponsor being like, am I? And the sponsor's it like, is. And that's, interesting. yeah, your amends is kind of like, am I the asshole? Mm. I, my amends list right now is very small. Um, Good. but that's also because I'm like, it's going to take time for me to also realize where I am the asshole in certain situations. Cause there mm-hmm. are, I'm sure there are situations where I'm still unaware of like, if I, if I was the problem which is why my amends, like, I know the first one that came to mind is Joy. Like, I owe her a big amends um, because I have put that girl through the fucking emotional ringer. I've been heinous to her. I have, because she's, like, my sister. And, Mm -hmm. like, she's just somebody who I've, like, emotionally taken advantage of um, because she is so kind and she's so there for me. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just, I get that thing where she'll, like, be too there for me. And I'm like, get the fuck away from me. You know, so like I owe her a huge amends. Um, and yeah, that was one. I know I owe one to a couple of exes for sure. Um, one of them I'm, I'm 
not sure if it's the right time to make an amends to him. Might be a little too soon, but I will eventually. And it took me a long time to also see where I was. I, I knew I had a part. I know I, I know I have a part in that relationship, but I didn't realize how maybe deep my part was in like manipulation and lying and like mm. using. And I have to make an amends for that. Wow. That's hard. Yeah. So I was the asshole big time in a relationship that I mostly put all of the blame on him. And I was like, See, you're the fucking asshole. And like, whatever, like his part is his part. And that's the other thing is like, I would try to justify it with my sponsor. And she's like, it doesn't fucking matter what he did. Doesn't matter how he acted. Didn't matter. Doesn't matter what he did. What did you do? And that I feel like is extremely difficult. It is. But because once you, you do it, it's very freeing. Like right. I think that we kind of touched a bit on this on the forgiveness episode. Yeah. But once you can kind of absolve yourself from like the the restraints, your um mm -hmm. yeah, like the grip you're you're keeping on uh, your justification That's on your actions. Thing. Yeah. You act, you end up feeling like you think you're going to feel better if you're like, but they did this, but they did but this. They did this. So like, I'm allowed to be angry at them. And it's like, okay, for how long? When you harbor that, it's like, it's, that's energy you're wasting. And yeah. it's, yeah, it's also just your hurt ego. Like, just like make peace with it. Understand that we are, humans are so fucking sloppy and so sloppy, multifaceted, complex, dumb, <laughs> big, you know, dumb, dumb, big, dumb, dumb. I mean, I personally, I like Al-Anon has been such a, um, like a, like a, I'm trying not to get like too emotional, but like it, it's, it's been, I mean, it has been life changing, but it's been like, I, I never really uh, realized how much of a victim complex I had and I would behave like the story, like slap in the box, like I've shared on here. I mean, like I've shared like a lot of lows on this podcast because I, I've bottomed out so many times, but I viewed myself in the right. Cause I'm like, but they did this and da, 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 da. And I'm like walking around just like this, like repressed behavioral issued, mm -hmm. but you know, cannonball. And yeah. it's like, whoa. But like the second you can get into like, I don't know, like have help with like regulating yourself. Yeah. It's just so much more peaceful. And also, like, I used to have so much drama in my life with my relationships, with right. with my friends even, and, like, and like with work. And now I just don't really, like, feel like that. Of course, like, little things still come up, but, like, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she gets real old. It does. But, uh, you know, a lot of us, we live our lives being defined by it. Being like, no, this is my story. I have to be angry at this person. They did me wrong. And it's like, okay, so what? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So back That's to my the asshole. <laughs> Never have I ever. <laughs> no. Never have I ever. Lee, are you the asshole for always leaving shit in the toilet? Or are we the assholes for falling for it every single time? You know, it's a bit of a whodunit sitch. <laughs> um, We'll leave it up to the audience. <laughs> That. And we will. Should we get into stories? Yeah, Chunk. Yeah, we've. I, uh, I got one. I I need to start off with. Okay. The subject is farted, and my BF beat my ass. <laughs> Boyfriend. Boyfriend. Yeah. And I believe it was written by a man. So I have IBS, and I fart more than I'd like to admit. My boyfriend hates it so much, but I can't control them. One time we had eaten ice cream, and he even teased me, saying I was going to gas the joint out. But I never pass on a strawberry sundae from the Reno ice cream house. Oh, you can't. Well, honey, you'd have to be a goddamn fool. You can't. Not the Reno ice cream Not house. Not the Reno ice cream house. Yeah. Um, uh, so we ate and I started farting. Far uh, I started farting fart after fart after fart. He eventually went to the room to play his little Xbox or whatever. And I continued to blast ass in the room while, I was, while I was still alone. Not, you're just enjoying the, eating your little sundae and just fucking. I know. With each bite. I know. Another fucking wet fart. Sounds like a machine gun out your bussy. Yeah. Um, I'm gassy, but respectful. When he came back, he said it smelled like literal rotting bodies and corpses <laughs> or something spilling out of... You need to start taking a lactate before you before you eat the stuff. Um, spilling out of a rotten sewer. I can agree my ice cream farts are mean. Mm -hmm. They literally smell like eggs. Con chorizo y menudo. Now here's the thing. Menudo. Menudo. LOL. I am a bilingual queen. My boyfriend continued to push me around the room. Don't worry. I got you. And that's on their culture is actually your costume. Um, <laughs> my, my boyfriend continued, and it's a good costume, continued to push me around the room, asking me why I was fucking with him. <laughs> I just grew so angry. I pushed him back. No. Oh, okay. Wait, 
continued to push me around there. Okay, so your boyfriend started pushing you around you're the farting room. so much. Well, that's just going to shake up the farts. That's so true. I grew so angry, I pushed him back. He walked away, and in a nervous fit, I started farting again. Very loud. <laughs> no. He no, turned no, no. around and socked me in the throat. No! And, and bashed me in the temple, leaving me frozen. Get this man a spear and put him on an island. So I'm going to be so honest. I only read the first three lines on the subject and I thought it was going to be lighthearted and funny. Um, it's giving Shyamalan twist. Welcome okay. to tea time. <laughs> and that's on, if it's not about for abuse, then we're not reading we're it, not reading, Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. No. Okay. Um, you, just, you got IBS. You're just gassing know, it up. You're just, okay. This is your boyfriend's ableist, ex-boyfriend, I hope. I, I stared at him as I... Re- as regret painted his face, he knew what he had done. And you're staring at him and you're still farting and, and you're, you're trying like, not to. Yeah. Okay. Um, we began to actually fuck immediately. It was actually, what the hell's going on here? This, fu- okay. He knew what he had done. We began to fuck immediately. It actually felt like a movie. <laughs> The human centipede. Uh, the smell of yeah, my... Yeah, what fucking movie? The smell of my heartburn farts to this day pisses him off unless we are fucking then he enjoys it for some reason. LOL. He's a sick dog. Thanks, Gabby and... <laughs> okay. Thanks, Gabby and Heather. I love you guys so much. Peace. <laughs> So thanks, thanks, Heather. So I am glad that you got your ass beat and I hope he beats you again. <laughs> so... My name's fucking Harper the fuck Rose, and I'm happy you got socked in the throat. <laughs> Next story. It's probably an auto It probably wasn't. <laughs> Heather. Thanks, Heather. That's, um, my, that's Heather. my hot cousin's name. Um. Now that... <laughs> also, it's weird now. It's like turned into a kink. Now he smells the farts and he go, He gets so mad and then he goes, hey, I gotta fuck this out of me. Not him. Kate, that's really violent though. He like is pushing <laughs> he you. so mad. Socks you in the throat. You're like, oh God. I and will. Then- Sorry, go on. Okay. I, I, I'll say this. <laughs> I have smelled farts to the point of pure rage. I was on, on an airplane? Yes, I was on a fucking flight and I was sitting next to Rodrigo who I go on the road with and I know that he he like was so high on edibles and I could smell him fucking farting and at one point I was like I was so mad and I was just sitting there with my fin- my fists clenched and I was like this motherfucker is lighting this. I was so fucking mad. I but wanted- you guys are close. Why did you just tell him to go to the fucking bathroom? I don't know. Cause he was just like passed out. He was really oh, high. Was passed out. And I'm just like taking in these farts and I'm like, this. I'm so, I was so mad. I'm like, can you fucking stop? Can you fucking stop? Now I'm going to tell you Primal rage. I, that makes me feel good because I feel like Rodrigo was my vessel for karma for all the, all the farts that you, <laughs> now here's the thing. Your farts are loud, but they usually don't smell. No, they do smell. Not the ones that you do here, though. They haven't smelled too bad. I'll make sure I change that. Okay. I will literally get Rodrigo in here. So. Now, okay. So here, uh, I won't choose between one of these titles, okay? Okay. We've got Veins, Oops, LOL, or Drinking Candle Wax. Which one? Ooh. Which one do you want to hear first? Ooh. Drinking Candle Wax. All right. Drinking Candle Wax. Yeah. A while back, around 1995, I joined a kink club called Spirit where we would all kick back and have sex. Pretty much a constant orgy, and we would meet up a few times a year out in Encino. It was a lot of hot lesbian stuff for me. Mostly, but a few times, I ate a male's ass and did penile oral, but nothing went inside of me ever. Okay, I think this is written by a man. I thought it was a woman. Yeah, sounds like a woman. Yeah, the name sounds... Okay, um... Yeah, okay. Because it was a lot yeah. of hot lesbian stuff for me. Okay, yeah, you're right. You guys, yeah. and you're right. Um, and I That's made him. That's why the closeted girls just never understand. Okay. I ate a male's ass and did penile oral, but nothing went inside of me ever. Your eyes absolutely written by lesbian. It, <clears throat> it was mostly, no, okay. It was a fetish slash kink club, though, so anything went. Piss play, BDSM, shit play, shit romance, fart sex, et cetera. I was never into anything like this, by the way. Just enjoyed people and the freedoms. So I ended up meeting a woman whose name I will not mention. We would usually just... Okay. No. We would would usually just rub boogers. 
What is rub boogers? Do they mean actually Lee, rub? Can you look up? Is it, I is don't it, know if that's Google. Is that Google? Is it a, well, let's is try. It like a, are they talking about clits or are they actually talking about rubbing Why boogers? Why would any of us have the answer to any question? What is ha- what is going on? Rub boogers? Rub boogers? R- not your tum tum. What? Rub booger. Kink fetish. Kinklovers.com. <laughs> Mucus fetish. Okay. Sexy side of snot. So they're talking about actual boogers. Oh, oh my God. That's no. making me actually sick. That's so gross. I can't do it. I can't. Okay. So they pull out their boogers and they rub them on their hands. No. Okay. You guys, what are you doing? Just read a book. How read to a- satisfy your mucus fetish. No, don't even have <laughs> one. a ton of porn videos made of mucophiles. Ah! Read I don't want to know. Hot, I didn't know there was such thing as a fucking mucophile. You guys. Women, women horking or blowing their nose. No. You don't have to look hard for visual stimulation. You guys. You'll, you'll also find humiliation, sissification, and other femdom videos galore that might show some snot, but you will find some real life women who is a mucophile. I'm so can glad I, I'm normal. And then I'll I, well, say that. <laughs> Okay, that's so fucking. I don't say that. Yeah. Oh, wait, Gab, pause really quick. Wait, yeah. Ways to play with snot Lee. fetish. No. Fetish okay. Room. Okay. So wait, yeah, wait, wait. Well, now we have to keep going. What do you mean ways to play with snot? Uh, there are erotica. some other kinks that work well for those with mucus with a mucus fetish. Here are some ways to cross over kinks: femdom and humiliation. Here are some snot fetish uh, with humiliation de- de- uh, degradation. Okay. Uh, being a, hu- okay, a human yeah, garbage. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, human okay. Garbage disposal. No. It's not erotica. Nasolingus. <laughs> okay, no, not a lingus. But Sne- here's the thing. Sneeze fetishism. Okay. Yeah. I just got There's a lot of it. I get the the, co- the comments are popping up from my Instagram, and some guy just wrote on on my thing. Fuck off. <laughs> You're on my Instagram. Okay, anyway. Okay, no, because I'm not fuck off. I'm going to show you how to turn off notifications. Please do, because they pop up on here. Okay, so they're rubbing boogers. <coughs> we would usually just rub boogers or do a little kissing with tongue. But one day she asked me if I would drink candle wax with her. Of course I declined. Oh, of course you did. Of course I declined, but she insisted to continue doing it herself. She grabbed a large lavender scented candle out of her bag and lit it. We continued to engage carpets while the candle burned, creating more drinkable liquid wax. The candle soon filled with a good amount, and she started pouring it on herself and drinking it. The wax was so hot, it burned her tits and singed her pubics. It turned me on. It, it, yeah, it turned me on like me. Hold on. It turned me on like me never before. My beaver grew so wet. You guys, enough with the erotica. I could we get- feel it quivering. Okay. It turned me on like never before. My beaver grew so wet I could feel it quivering. Cool. Begging to piss. No. What? She then <laughs> drank the wax and the look on her face was horror, but also pleasure. She opened her mouth to reveal melted wax on her tongue with already blistering scars. She then forced herself to throw up. Okay, this is what Rob DeSantis is afraid of. Leaving the hot wax to come up and burn her mouth even more. Slivers of meat hung off her corroding tongue. And we began to make out. Believe it or not, me and this girl whose name I refuse to mention dated. Okay, nobody's begging you. <laughs> yeah, nobody needs to know I, this bitch's I name. I don't know. They, I you refuse know to mention. Okay, yeah, you know it's what? fine. Wait, put a pin in that real quick because here's the thing, you guys. You never have to mention anyone. You guys were like, here's their full name. And then we'll say it because you guys wrote it. And you guys were like, I can't believe you said the name. It's like, just don't put it in. Dang. We read what you send us. If you okay. don't want it read, tell us. Come okay, on. but you're refusing to mention the name. Well, please, no, we need to know. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whose name I refuse to mention. Dated until 2004 uh, when she killed herself okay. in a staged house fire. The way to go. Is this a Rob Zombie fucking... 
this script. Is, like, what is this? R.L. Stein? What is this? This is wait. Who's the guy Stein. that did Tusk? Kevin R. Smith. This is, is a Kevin, Kevin Smith, Smith script. Kevin Smith. What is ha- like? Because th- someone's turning into an animal in the next line. Watch. She's like, oh, yeah, and I woke up, but I looked like an aardvark. It's like, what's going on? I'll never. Okay, I'll never forget you, VV girl. Okay. Okay. Can we just? Like, Thanks, Gabby. I've been wanting to share for a while. Okay. Also, your co-host Hagrid. <laughs> What is going on? <laughs> is this the same person? What's the email? Also, your co-host Hagrid. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Keep doing you. Tea time forever. <laughs> Thinking of getting a tattoo of you guys' name. <laughs> Gabby and Hagrid. <laughs> or Heather. <laughs> What the hell is like going Hagrid. the fuck on? Hagrid. Hagrid. Okay, everyone's fucking stupid and They're gay. getting back at you for pee. Oh, pee. Fuck. Well, she was, says pee too. Is it worth it. So now I'm a little lost yeah, because I don't know her. where you're wondering where you're the asshole in this, but thanks for they the story, I guess. To, yeah, yeah, okay, wait. I honestly forgot what the prompt was because <laughs> that story, no offense, was so fucking bad. <laughs> that was just such a stupid story. What the hell was that? There was a random suicide. There was a suicide in a staged house fire. Are you okay? Are you having? And then she like, like no, I, who cares? But so then, and then her beaver's <laughs> growing because you're there, like drinking wax. Drinking wax. You just like told us some weird perv story. Maybe that was for Patreon. It wasn't. No. <laughs> Okay. 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 I swear to God, how is the writing getting worse? But okay. <laughs> hey, honky, bonky, and daddy, uncle Lee. So here's a story that just happened this week. My youngest sister is 16 and she's a bit of a wild child, sneaking out at night, drinking, vaping, regular naughty teenager stuff. She's also recently become sexually active. She shared this with our mother and it didn't go over well. Mom called her a whore and told her she Mm. needs to worry about her reputation. Of course, she didn't act this way when my brother lost his virginity. Gotta love the double standards. Anyways, my sister asked to get on birth control and mom, of course, said no. No. However, we live in a red state and you only have six weeks to have an abortion if pregnant. And we all know how men are. They try and make uh, they try and make up any excuse to not wear a condom. So I offered to order my sister birth control online uh, on the down low. I gave her the pill, plan B, condoms, all the goodies to keep her safe. And I told her to hide them and not let mom know. Well, I guess she should have chose a little bit better of a hiding spot because my mother looked under my sister's bed while she was out of the house and found everything I gave her. No. Whoops. These mothers ruin their daughter's lives, by the way. These mothers are idiots. Um, Of course, she is raging now. My sister hasn't told her it's me who got her the birth control yet, even though she keeps asking where it came from. Like, I know my mom is the asshole for invading my sister's privacy and snooping mm-hmm. through her shit, but I feel really guilty because trying, because by trying to help her, I ended up getting her in trouble really bad. And my mom is low-key abusive of towards her. I just feel really bad about the whole situation. By the way, thanks for everything. I love y'all so much. I look forward to my two episodes a week. Okay, honey, we love you, but what do you think? I I don't think she's an asshole at all. I I, I think her mom's a fucking crazy, abusive asshole. Your mom's abusive. You're not an asshole. You're literally trying to help your sister out. Your mom's the asshole. Yeah. Your mom's an asshole. And that's on the mom's the asshole. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, you know, I don't... Fuck, dude. That's really hard. Your mom's abusive. (laughs) You're not an asshole. No. Quite the opposite quite the fucking opposite mothers don't do that to your child like why are you doing this to your kids they because i know it's like this thing of like i'm trying to help her it's a control thing it's a control but it's like, thing. do you want her to go have unprotected sex or do you want her to, like just be smart about it they're gonna grow up it's you didn't have a. that's the thing a lot of parents have kids because they want to have a baby yeah they don't want to have a fully like developed human with their own opinions right. and own personality traits and own likes and they're desires. not ready to deal with a person, they, with a person. They, they like having a baby that they can control and dress up and do cute things for and then that baby grows up and yeah exactly they're like I now what like most people should just get little baby dolls little cabbage patch kids instead of actual How's human that? kids I hope AI you can afford do- it more. No one can afford kids right now. Yeah, there we go. You guys don't even know how to raise a fucking kid. They're gonna fuck. We're overpopulated. There's too many fucking assholes in the world. And that's because too many people are just like, I want a baby. Yeah. Okay, guess what? They're only a I baby a for baby. a few months. And then they're teething. They're clawing on your fucking nipples. And then you raise them to be as fucking horrific as you. Yeah. And then they grow up to be fucking, they're, they're fucking in the street without protection. Or they're getting raped, Or they are rapists. So those are your three options. Yeah, th- and those are your three options. And those are the only options. Get a Cabbage Patch Kid. I rest my case. I agree. Next. All right. My cousin looks like a dyke. (laughs) 
And that's the next story. Okay, well, here's this one. Hey, big puss lips and big tits and Uncle Titty Twister Lee. Okay. <laughs> okay, you guys are fucked up today. I'm an asshole and I'm very aware of it most times. So I'm just going to throw out some situations where I think I'm not really an asshole. My cousin called me Dora the Explorer when I got my hair cut short. So I told him he looks like a dyke. And I wasn't wrong. I even did a pick comparison and sent it to our group chat and all of the cousins in it. And it scored big time. And everyone couldn't stop laughing. And it was the light. And it was a life highlight of mine. Okay. I'll attach the pic. So am I an asshole? Here's another. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for sending us the pic too. And also, yeah, <laughs> for sending it in your group chat with your cousins, getting everybody to get fucking piled up on your cousin, call him a dyke, and then say that it's the highlight of your life. Yes. <laughs> Taking pleasure in, in another person's demise yeah. is asshole. It's asshole. Okay. Here's another good one. I convinced my brother guys have periods when I was in the fifth grade and I was in fourth. He believed me. Okay, well, he's stupid. He believed me and started having a panic attack and I couldn't stop laughing. And my mom came in and started yelling at me and calmed him down. It was funny as fuck. I don't think I'm the asshole for that, TBH. No, you're not. That one, you're good. I think when it comes to siblings, I th no, I think it's good. I but agree. the first one, you're an asshole. Cousins, let's keep it cute, but siblings, fuck them. Okay, this is now this one's gonna piss me off. Mm -hmm. I also gave my brother, oh, actually, no, it's not. I also gave my brother a dog cookie and told him it was a regular cookie. I was thinking you were saying that you were giving a dog something that you shouldn't have. Okay, but it's too human, it's fine. I also gave my brother a dog cookie and told him it was a regular cookie. Not till my grandma came in and saw him eating it. Her mouth dropped and told him it was a dog cookie. He started spitting it out and gagging. And I couldn't stop laughing because that shit was hilarious. Then he tried beating the fuck out of me. So I ran and hid. Another life highlight of mine. Don't think I'm an asshole for that either. No, you're not. You are an asshole, but I do I want to say that. Yeah. Also, also, if he was just enjoying it until your grandma said, hey, that's a dog cookie. It sounded like he liked it. I hate this expression, but, you know, she was legally yucking his. Do I think you're an asshole? Yes. But do I think that your grandma was, quote unquote, yucking his yum? And yeah. do I ever want to say that again? No. But uh, yeah, he was liking it. OK, so so he likes beef cookies or whatever yeah. that was. Also, I also think my brother has autism. Oh. I mean, he got tested and they said, nah, but I don't know that maybe he's a smart tard. <laughs> okay. Charming. <laughs> okay. Okay. Delightful. All right. No um, smart tard. Okay. So this, this subject is, um, asshole and I know it, but can I overcome it? Okay. Hello to my favorite honk and honkies and Lee the Jew bear. Okay. So the nicknames are a flowing today. Uh, I'm a new listener as I thought this podcast was going to be the poor man's version of the Red Scare podcast, and I got scared. But after giving you guys a listen, I am pleasantly surprised that you all have such great banter and top-notch personalities, all which makes this a fucking great pod. I even became a Patreon member. Thank you for, though, thinking we would be like the Red Scare, because Red, Red Scare is very successful. It's extremely successful. So... Okay. I guess we're successful. Okay. Here's the thing. Um, well, okay. Compliments aside, let's get into the prompt at hand. My mom has this old school saying that excuses are like assholes. Everybody's got one, which is extremely true. But after doing some self-reflection, I find myself just thinking about assholes. Then after brushing off the thought of actual buttholes, I think about assholes in the figure. Okay. The figurative sense, starting with me. I think that I am an asshole to people that I care about and honestly have no reason why I do it. Relatable. As I say, habits start at home and I feel like being an asshole or being mean started there. My mother is naturally abrasive, regularly administering tough love wherever she saw fit. Relatable. Relatable. Me too. Relatable. Yeah. Um, and within this, she loves to tease and basically talk shit about us. It's like, it's like teasing and bullying with a thin layer of love underneath it. Okay, yeah. This is written by my mom or this is written by me. I feel like in my family, like um, humor is like a form of currency, but it's like mean humor. And like, oh, we're yeah. all so critical of one another and yeah. we're all just like, yeah, it's wild. Okay. Yes. This is so fucking relatable. That's what she regularly did. And mind you, this type of parenting spans over 30 years of parenting to two sets of kids from of different generational sets and is deeply rooted in all four, including myself of my siblings. When I've asked her about this and why she can't just parent like the white moms on TV, she said, in lack of better words, after giving her speech on the racial disparities of the white and black household, that her love is mostly service-based and is for the most part tough. 
And she explained that even she was parented in such a way that's not that lovey-dovey. Basically passing down the sentiment of, I love you because I brought you into this world oh my God. and give you your basic needs and wants, but I can't give you the, t- the typical warm motherly nature that you're looking for, which is fine, I guess. No, literally, this is so me. This is exactly how my mom is. Your mom is like that. A hundred percent she's like that. She literally, the other day, I haven't talked to her since. She was like, I love you because you're my daughter, but I don't like you. That's so fucking hurtful. We haven't spoken since. I was just like, fuck off, bitch. No, then we're not going to, we don't need to talk then. Yeah. It's so fucking mean when moms say that It's horrible. Fuck off. It's It's horrible. And I've given you everything you wanted your whole life. I'm like, you don't, well, except for love. Like, yeah. Except for support. Yeah. Except for emotional support. Yeah. You've like bought things for me and you've like you fed me. Yeah. If our moms are so fucking great, then why are we both in 12 step? <laughs> why are we stand ups? If I was, if I was an emotionally regulated person, if I, yeah. Why do you, okay. I would, you know what? If I was, if my mom was an emotionally stable person, I would have been a court reporter like she wanted. And I would have been a dentist. And there it well, is. Well, my mom doesn't believe me that much. She always says a dental hygienist. Fucking bitch. Okay. Um, <laughs> Because she says she's being realistic. I used to have a joke about this. One time, a few days before Thanksgiving, it was like in 2015, my mom texted me and she goes, we had been in a, a little bit of an argument and she texts me and she goes, I love you, honey. And I go, I love you too, mom. And she goes, oh, whoops, that was for your brother. Are you coming tomorrow? And I was like, all right, so. Women are fucking vicious. They're disgusting. I can't believe, it. okay, doesn't yeah. matter. But they're still better than men. I can't believe we all come from women. I know. And men, I can't believe, you know what? We crawl our way we out should, of women. We should fucking, we should be coming from AI machines. Just put us... Put us in a robot and let a robot birth the, us. He, birth is barbaric and I'm kind of done with it. But okay, I digress. Let's get anyway. back into it. Oh, okay. Um, passed down the sentiment of I love you. I brought you in this world. Uh, yeah, your mom definitely has this. My mom is like warm, but like it's, it's almost incestuous because it's like it's it's all based in control. I love you, mom. <laughs> okay. Um, I can't give you the type, the typical warm motherly nature that you're looking for, which is fine, I guess. I feel like this is the type of parenting that causes people to end up as serial killers. It is. It literally is. Thank God the homicidal tendencies haven't kicked in. I just became fat instead. Okay. I literally am in love with you. Yeah. If we now, were wired just a little bit differently, we would be no different than, I don't know, Ed Gein. Yeah. And that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Now, as a fat asshole, I seem to take this approach to my friends and siblings as well. I tease them all day and they tease back and that's fine. But knowing when to cap it off, knowing when to cap off the teasing to stay away from entering that asshole territory is a problem. Agreed. In the household, me and my siblings and my mom will tease and tease and tease. And then we start to literally bully each other and say the most heinous things to each other. And that's overflowing into how I converse with my friends because I don't seem to know how to just tease and not snap and into bullying asshole mode. And then without that type of banter, I have no clue how to befriend people in a way because it's a vulnerability thing. Um, I have no clue how to befriend people in a way that goes beyond the, hey, you look cool. Hey, I like your outfit. Hey, you like so-and-so? Yeah, me too. Stage of conversation. I just feel stuck in the asshole cycle because it's literally all I know. I'd love to be a better sibling and a better friend and not hurt people's feelings because I'm not well equipped to talk to people. If you guys have any advice on how to do such things, I'd love to hear it. Thanks and much love. Okay, much love to you. Thank you so much for writing in. Okay, wow, was- not the email address. I'm not going to say it out loud, but look. Okay. Okay. You're funny. I don't really funny. And scary. But um that, I feel like that was literally written by that was like reading that was listening to me. So what advice would you give yourself and to our little friend? I mean, it takes a lot of vulnerability to like write things like that. And you're obviously you're writing this because you're self aware, you know? Like there's so much self awareness in that. Like you know, you know that the way that you treat people is out of like fear because you don't know how to like correctly show like love and vulnerability because you weren't taught to do so um this is something i fucking have to like work on daily it's so hard it's a defense mechanism you're like Mm -hmm. constantly living in a state of like fight or flight it's a defense mechanism to always be i never know when to cap off being an asshole either i never know when it's like time to be sensitive uh, because that's and that's all on me and this is all on you and you realize it. I don't know. My advice is to in the moments. I think it's like contrary action, um, you know, in the moments where you want to be a fucking asshole. Maybe you don't maybe switch it, you you know, like show vulnerability rather than like making fun of something. I can't say I'm very good at that. You are getting better, though. I would say you're getting better. But, like, anytime you feel a surge of emotion, do the opposite. Think the opposite. 
Because now you're like wired in such a way. You're hardwired now to be like, to to be a cynical asshole because you're fucking mom. I get it. In totally. the same way. Contrary action, baby. Preach it, sis. It's a long one. We ready? Yeah. Hey, bitches. This is long as <laughs> fuck. My bad. First, I'd like to say thank you for existing. You've made me see that I'm not the only psycho who doesn't know my ass from a hole in the ground. Okay. Okay, well, <laughs> let's calm the fuck down, but okay. Your podcast is a way for all of us young adults to virtually congregate, laugh at ourselves, and lean on one another in tumultuous times. And that's fucking rad. That's awesome. Thank okay, you. Okay, that's really sweet. We love that. Thanks, Hagrid. Does it fucking say Hagrid? No. Okay. That's so funny. Hagrid. It's like... Did, was I like, did I have a seizure one episode and I like missed this bit? Okay, okay. Anywho, I have to find myself wondering if I am indeed the asshole in many situations lately. However, here's, I will say this. If you do wonder, you probably are. Yeah. You know? And that's okay. Also, in some situ- in, uh, in quite a few situations, I would say, I mean, life is not black and white. So, so like, are the situations that arise in it aren't going to be either. Mm-hmm. And like, like you know, I-, I think multiple people can be assholes in situations. But I again, it's kind of like what we we're talking about in the beginning of this episode. It's like just focus on like your part. You, you have to kind of like release control of like the way that other people are reacting. So you can't, you don't have any like say over that. You just have to, uh, you know, you got to hear it. And sometimes it takes a while to see. Yeah. All right. Um, Anywho, I find my... Okay, if I am the asshole. In many situations lately. Lately, however, it's been my relationship in particular. My boyfriend and I have been together since 2011. 12 years. A long, wonderful, difficult, painful at times, eye-opening, blissful, wild 12 years. Congrats, actually. That's... That's amazing. We have a seven-year-old and an 18-month-old. I work as a freelance writer. Okay. Okay, go off. And he's a chef. Okay, hot. That's fucking hot. That's a hot couple. That is so fucking hot. No, that's so fucking hot. We get by. Times are tough and only getting tougher thanks to the increasingly shady government or whatever, but we make do. Anyway, my problem lies in wondering if I'm an asshole for feeling completely psychotic at times because I barely have any friends. We moved to a new city in 2019 and the pandemic followed shortly thereafter thus making it extremely difficult to socialize or make any friends at all. I've managed to make a few uh, mom friends since we switched cities, one of whom I consider a very close friend at this point. However, that's it. She's all I've got. She's my only friend I can call to hang out with here. And sometimes I feel so sad and so isolated. Back home, I have a ton of friends, and I was always hanging out with someone at least three times a week. I made sure of it. I'm a social creature, and I can't go out without seeing people other than my family for a very long time without absolutely without feeling absolutely insane. However, my boyfriend and I were uh, were unhealthy codependent for a good five years or so. It was literally just he and I and heroin. The plot thickens. Wow. From like 2011 to 2015, before we had any kids or obligations, we got hooked together and got clean together. We've been clean since the beginning of 2015. My oldest daughter was born in November of 2015. Wow. Insane. Anyway. I tried both of them. My right. Oof. I try to tell my significant other that if neither he nor I have friends and only have one another to depend on, for every little thing, we are going to self-destruct. Our relationship will eventually become toxic and volatile, and we won't be able to stand one another anymore. That is probably very true. He thinks I'm wrong. He says it could just be the two of us on earth and he'd be fine forever. And while that's super fucking sweet. And I feel that way, too, to a certain extent. I also feel that's not realistic or healthy. I will agree with that. Mm-hmm. He somehow feels like he doesn't need any friends. And honestly, tons of people have asked him to hang out since we've moved here. Like, he's met people, like, people he's met at work. I don't have the opportunity to meet people at work as I work from home. And he's said no to every single time. He says he doesn't like to drink, and that's all anyone wants to do here, which I understand. But also, he needs social interaction. I know he does. He's just gone without it for so long he's forgotten. At least that's my opinion. He also had a bunch of friends back home who, whom he mostly lost touch with now due to the fact that the majority of them were just party friends. Our hometown is a couple hours from where we are now, and most of our legitimate friends have left and started their own lives elsewhere, further away. I still see a few of my hometown homies from time to time when we make the effort to get together, but obviously not very much. Sorry this is so long, but I guess my question is, am I the asshole for feeling like I need friends to feel sane, especially when I am momming and working nonstop otherwise? He says it's totally normal to feel isolated and stuff, but that I'm wrong for thinking our relationship will eventually go sour if neither of us have social lives. TBH, I think it is already starting to sour. We fight way too much, and the fights are so intense when they happen, just emotionally so draining. I don't want my kids to be subjected to the fighting 
but I also don't want them to be without their dad. As he said, if we broke up, he'd probably leave the state. Okay. So I don't know. I just feel stuck and wondering if I'm in the wrong for thinking that we both need to have lives outside of these parenting roles we are constantly in and the relationship roles too. I know I'm a mother and a girlfriend, but I feel like I also need time to just be me. Is that wrong or selfish? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Also, it's not like he's keeping me from making friends or anything like that. It's just really difficult for 30 somethings to make friends these days, it seems like. Especially when you have friends, especially when you have kids and obligations that take up take up your time 24 7 not to mention we have absolutely zero help with our kids the only family we have here basically refuses to help us out we just have one babysitter who charges astronomical astronomical rates blah i doubt this will make it to the pod it's way too long worth a shot well guess what guess what you're here it did you made it and i have a lot of things to say about it yeah same so I... let's um so, so in short i'm gonna say i don't think she's the asshole not at all there are a lot of things to unpack here. Again, we are not, we're not, you know, psychologists. We don't know things. This is just our I own life I know we come experience. off as scholars, but honey, we're not. These are just our own things we're learning along the way. So we're learning with you and sharing our opinions with, you know, yeah. no, no real scientific background. But here's the thing. I do not think you're the asshole. I think... I think that people need people to thrive. We are social we're fucking creatures. We're communal. We're communal. We need, like, I understand, like, maybe your boyfriend isn't super social and he doesn't think that he needs a lot and, like, fine, that's him. But if you do, you do. Yeah. Whatever the fuck he f can figure he out. He needs what he needs. You need what you need. You and, like, yeah. maybe he used to, you're, you were saying that, like, he used to be social and you're like, you're like, this is my opinion that he still does. Maybe he doesn't now. So that's that's not any of our business. But like yeah. what it sounds like, because we just, you know, you just let us be in your business. But it sounds like yeah. is that, um, yeah, I think you're completely in the right for wanting a life outside of that. Because I've also heard a lot of mothers talk about this where like they start getting so depressed mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. unhappy when they're losing their sense of individuality. Like you said, I also feel like I need time to just be me. Is that wrong or selfish? No, not Absolutely at all. not. You're still an individual. And this is the thing about becoming a parent is that I think, I don't know, I'm not a fucking parent, but like, yes, your life changes and it has to like become about this kid now, but it's still, you still, in order to like raise a healthy fucking person, you yourself have to take care of your own needs. Mm -hmm. And we get this thing like mixed up in our heads, I think, or like, I, I, I remember like Maya Angelou wrote about this in her book, uh, Mom and Me and Mom. And I always think about this. She is a, a bit in the book her mother Maya Angelou's mother left her when she was really young she has a lot of trauma from that but her mom tells her later on like in her life as she's you know they they become very close and her mom's like you need to take care of yourself basically like you your life is the most important life because if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not able to take care of your child. So, mm -hmm. like, you have to do what you have to do to show up as, like, a good mother. And, like, you do – if you need to go be social and have friends, fucking you got to do it. Like, Esther Perel talks about this shit all the time where we can't rely on our partners to For give everything. us everything. I know. When she said that, that really hit home. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people struggle with being codependent in that way. It's not, codependency yeah. doesn't just mean the amount of time you're spending with someone. It also means like how, how many hats you're trying to get your partner to wear. They can't wear every single hat, the right. best friend hat, the therapist, the, the partner, the, yeah. the caretaker. It's, it's too much. You guys should be a team. Right. But like, you know, we need people. It's like the same way with friendships. Like you don't just have one friend because like, when you, I mean, you can, but like, I get so much joy from having like many friends because they're, they each bring something different. There's diff they bring out different parts of you. You have different conversations. They make you think about things in a different way. People have different senses of humor. Like you need to be around a lot of people, you know, because it, it helps you grow. A hundred percent. Helps you expand your fucking, your universe, your sense of self. I think the fighting would decrease if you guys weren't just going emotionally stir crazy. Yeah. Because I think it's like, yeah, you guys are kind of, you guys went through a pandemic, you guys got sober, you guys have these two children and they're young. And then like, you know, you're working from home. It sounds yeah. like, like, of, like that's just, you're very confined still. Everyone else got to go back into the yeah. world and you're just still stuck in it. There have been massive studies about this too in like American psychology uh, because Americans are like super 
individualistic. We have this thing of like, it's important to be me and to have my family. And that is that. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, you look at other cultures that are fucking thriving and it's because they're more communal. Yeah. We crave community. It's like why people go to church. That's why people, you know, play sports because we need other people to feel like grounded. And piggybacking off of that, she was saying it's really hard to make friends in your 30s and whatnot. I totally right. can see that. However, I would say, and obviously I don't know your husband's work schedule and like the babysitter and all that. And I understand you have a seven month year old, so I'm I'm not entirely sure, but I'm, I'm wondering if like you could look on like Facebook or look up like, um, wherever you live, like try and find a, um, like a, maybe either like another mother's group that meets in the park or like if you're into like, I, again, like wherever you live, like if there's like a rock climbing thing uh, right. or, or go, go to a gym, go, take classes, go, go to something where you have to be active like yeah. don't just like join a gym and just like be by yourself like go do something in a class scenario like right. like i don't have class. any kids and i did just turn 30 but like i made a bunch of new friends because i'm doing like improv and acting classes and i've made friends mm -hmm. of like of all ages and it's really fun and cool to to go do that right but again like I understand like money and time is like a totally, we're all going through different things, right. but I'm saying like, if you can carve out like an hour, maybe two on like a Sunday morning to go or do a Saturday yoga. morning, go do, like, if you want to just do something for yourself, go do yoga, go on a run or take a cooking class. Yeah. Go to the batting cage. But I don't know. Go, you know, like just try and like do something. Part of why we're so isolated now is, and I've talked about this before, but it's the lack of a third location. We have work, we have home, and but right. what what the internet has taken away is the third location. So true, and mm. and that's why people are so attracted to bars. Yeah. Um. And but we used to have parks. Um. Uh. City and state parks was it was a major third location. Yeah. For a long time, people really congregated in parks. Um. But now parks are becoming. Um, the shelters. Yeah. Parks are becoming um, less a place where people meet people and more a place where people are still isolated. They just kind of still go and are isolated either with themselves. They have headphones on and they yeah. go and tan and they're not meeting people when they go to parks where people used to kind of go and be a little more open and available to meet people at parks. Right. Um, so the, there is this, and I've I've actually seen a lot online on people talk about the lack of these third locations, and um, and I uh, I'm wondering what's going to be done with it because it really needs to be taken um, account of in like city planning mm -hmm. um, to bring these third locations back. That makes a lot of sense. And that's, this is like the, the, you know, the issue with social media is it's made us all so connected and yet so distant mm -hmm. because we go, yeah, we go online to like feel connected, but like we need the, but, the, like, and you know, like so, and so many studies have proven that like the most, the, the best that humans feel is when we're in conversation with other humans because you're listening, you're actively listening, you're with somebody else, you're making eye contact. It's, you're we getting dop it. dopamine and you, and it feels good to connect and find, yeah. Some, yeah, and all of that. And so, like, yes, of course, you can like go on TikTok and like a video with, with 1.2 million views and 450,000 yeah. likes and be like, wow, I identify with this. But then you're just alone in your room clicking buttons. Like, you're, you're not, go to comedy, like, go to a comedy show, like, truly, like, find comedians like comedy that are coming. Are pretty affordable. They're and they're yeah. fun. Like you have kids or sleep. Like go go to a show even by yourself. I know it's scary, but like find people that like look up who's in your town. Go to a show. Like go laugh. Get out of your head. Like enjoy being around people. Yeah. Like you'll meet people at a comedy show. Like and do something yeah. that's relieving. Yeah. Because then once once you're like relieved in that way, you're more in, in a group setting, you're more likely to meet other people. Like totally. you're, you're more kind of set up to make a friend. Yeah. Also, if you said you got sober, I mean, I wonder also if like, like, I don't know your program and I'm not here, like, I'm not trying to like whatever, but like also maybe going to like in per, like, I, I know it's hard with the kids, but like, if you are still like working a program or whatever you're doing, like that could also be like a good place to meet meet friends by going to. Yeah, if you do do that, if you there's... can. Also, if you don't, like you know, again, just I'm just throwing out ideas. But... Yeah, you're not an asshole. It's also think about like anytime you spend time with anybody, 
too much. You're like, can you get the fuck away from me? Any, you know? Anyone. We yeah. all need fucking breaks. Like, that's maybe your husband. I don't know. Men maybe aren't. W women, I know we need a lot of stimulation. Mm -hmm. We need mental stimulation. Men, you're built differently. Maybe you don't need as much as we you do. You guys can look at a piece of cheese and it's yeah. going to be just as fascinating as if you had a four-hour conversation yeah. with your best friend. And but it's not to say that men also don't need to socialize. They do. But I think women, we are biologically like built more for like we get so much out of socializing and being because together. Because women are gatherers. We're trying to gather information and get cl and gather closeness yeah. to our friends. Think, okay. Think about a lion pack. You got the men, the one man, he's kind of sits around by himself and the women all are together. They hunt yes. together. They raise the kids together. In the pride. In the pride. And that's not a thing of lions. All right. Okay, I got one. Are Hope that gay, helps. Are you fucking gay lords ready? Yeah. Hey, sassy honk, gassy honk, and the upper decker king, Uncle Lee. <laughs> Y'all really are coming in hot today. First off, I already know I am an asshole, but I will share nonetheless. When I was poor, I split the rent on a room with a girl I made friends with a year prior. After a very short time living under the same roof as her, I realized she was a complete, useless, chronically unemployed idiot Jesus. that just wanted me to drive her around. <laughs> No, that what? Okay, nope. That was mincing words. Okay, instead of moving because I was poor, I opted to entertain myself at her expense because I realized what a piece of shit she was and what a bigger piece of shit her friends were. <laughs> Call it a coping mechanism. This did include going to her friends' parties and stealing their house goods. Um, when she would harass me to drop her off at random dudes' houses, <laughs> I would get, no, I'm gay. You're fucking gay. Okay, um, I, I'd get a hold of her phone and text, hey, to all the other people she was or used to screw. Ironically, did something similar to myself once when on Ambien. Okay, so now that's actually giving you, Gabby. Um, I took up smoking. <laughs> Not the Ambien. Yeah, it's very much Ambien, and that's on Italy. Um, I took up it smoking is. unfiltered Lucky Strikes to spite her because she could never afford her own cigarettes and Screaming. always wanted to bum one from me. Screaming. Okay. I The best one that I will cherish for the rest of my life, she used to screw random dudes unprotected at random parties, then later leave her piss-soaked pregnancy tests on the counter. So I took the red manic panic she always left out and added an extra line and let her freak out for a couple hours. Oh my God. It's giving... What's this? Spell it out. Uh, it, no. It... <laughs> <laughs> you get one Sh try. Schadenfreude. 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 Do you know what that means? Pleasure derived from somebody's misfortune. That would be a German word. That's 100% German, isn't it? Yeah. Well, if it's... Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. It's... Uh... Schadenfreude. So fucking German. Danke. Go. Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. I don't That's like that. So fucking. I don't. German. I don't ever want to hear that again. Okay. Seriously, except I do want to go to Berlin. But okay. Seriously, she was gross. I'd pick her up from dudes' houses, and she'd have to take. Uh, oh, she'd have me take her to Walgreens so she could steal some summer's eve, probably because they hadn't invented the drip stick yet. A. Alas, I put it to the honks. Am I the asshole? Love the podcast. My fiance and I are sorry we missed Harper's Redondo Beach appearance. Aww. Hope you all... Okay, I literally love you. Hope you all the um, the best. And I hope Lee stops trying to date his coworkers. <laughs> Fingers crossed his profile sees some action. Okay, you're fucking cute. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm seeing... Okay. So, I think it kind of goes back to... There's two sides. And look... Are you in the right for, or not even in the right, but like, is it totally normal to feel frustrated with this friend? A hundred percent. When I was poor, da, 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 this did include going to her friend's parties and stealing their house goods. Hey, would, you're, you're doing asshole things. I would get a hold of her phone and text hey to all the other people she was screwing or used to screw. Okay. You know, here's the thing. And you're fucking with her. You're fucking with her. That's the thing. Because I was like, we yeah. uh, over the course of this podcast, we've heard some worse things. So my marker, my gauge started started going a little off. But you are fucking with her. You are. There's asshole tendencies here. Um, we all have them. And but I do. I empathize with your frustration. And I will also go back. I will echo what Honk said earlier when she was like, you know, it's it's hard to be Christ-like. We are just human. And. Whatever. I, I just had a... um. You're funny. Yeah, you're funny. You are funny. You're prankster. You're funny. And that's cute that you wanted to see me in Redondo. Um, I... Okay, when I was in high school, this just reminded me. 
and this is like just some funny fucking shitty prank shit, but also probably kind of assholey. When I was in high school, there was this guy that he was like hot. He was all like ripped. His name was Aaron. I will lose. I'll leave his last name out. Um, but his name was Aaron, and he. And I started texting. He was kind of a douchebag from what I remember. And I remember one night he texted me. And he was like, oh, like, let me come over. And I had a bunch of girlfriends at my house. And we were like, okay, let's tell him to come over. But then I'm going to pretend that, like, I... that Like, we made up a lie about, like, somebody stole my phone. Right? So he... Between what? my friends and I, we were like, oh, you know, somebody stole my phone. But we're texting. We're, I'm texting Aaron. And I'm like, yeah, come over. Let's hook up. I want to okay. hook up with you. So my friends and I are having this fucking gag. We're sitting in my room, which is like you can jump out of my the window, like onto the ground. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to sneak in and out of. And we're like, all right, Aaron, like, come over. I can't wait to see you. I was like telling him like I was going to fuck him and stuff. And he comes up to my room and my friends and I are sitting on my bed and he like knocks on my window and we all act surprised and we're like what are you doing here and he's like you know dressed all nicely no, and no. and we're like what are you doing here and he's like oh didn't oh, we were just texting and I was like oh no my phone was stolen I don't have my phone and he's like oh and I, he, he said something like I was like, "What do you do? Did you want to? Do you want to come in?" With all my friends sitting on the bed, and like they're all laughing, and he's like, "Oh no, I was um, I was just jog. I was actually just on a jog through the neighborhood, oh. and we were just fu we were fucking screaming, crying, As you guys are like, laughing, uh, like laughing like fucking jackals. Uh, yeah, just these little fucking bitches. Did I also tell the story on here where we invited a bunch of people to a fake party at my house when I was in high school? I no. think I did." I've never heard I it. I don't remember it. It was another asshole thing. My friends and I would get so bored. It was like the middle of the day on a weekend. And we started like, I started like texting. I think I had got, oh, I got some guy's number from the beach. So we were like, okay, let's invite them over to my house for a party. Mm -hmm. But instead we gave them my neighbor's address. Oh my God. We we're like, there's a house party in my house. Go over there, bring beer. And we were, my friends and I, fucking losers were all like in my living room peering out the windows watching people show up to my neighbor's house <laughs> and we're like in the living room like jumping up and down laughing just like they're like knocking on my neighbor's door and their neighbors are like no there's nothing here and they I remember they keep calling because I gave them my house phone number and they're calling the house phone and I'm like no 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 we're here go in the back go in the back and they're like Gabby oh my god and then they look over and then they see us because we're all like in the in the windows like laughing at them and then they come over to my house and they're like banging on the door and they're like you fucking bitches Jesus and we were like and we're like hiding and we're hiding on like behind the couches in my fucking house that was it anyway I thought it was so fucking funny I got my brother I went downstairs and I was like Garrett there are these guys trying to break in and he had to go up there and cuss them out and be like, there's nobody here. So anyway, we gaslit a bunch of these people into thinking there was a party. I think that's kind of fun. Thank you. So I guess I'm not the asshole. I'm just having no, fun. No, I think you're perfect. I used to ding dong ditch. That was perfect. It is perfect. Yeah, perfect. Um, this one guy was mean to one of my girlfriends. So we got a bunch of soap and we soaped his car, just suds it all up. Yeah. And it was cold. So then it just like kind of stuck on there. Have I told a story about when my friend got herpes from a guy and then we all took a shit on it. We all <laughs> separately took yeah, shit on his car. I don't know if car. you told it on here, but you've told me that before. We all took shits on his car and like smeared it onto the windows. Oh, that's so gross. One story left. This is just a little fun kicker. Is it short? Yep. Okay. We're at time. So this we're going to close with this. Okay. Yeah. So this one's something else. Um, my name is Jensen, originally Jenny. I'm a 29-year-old female to male transition patient as of 2012. Whoop, whoop. Congrats. LOL. I want to make this short, but I also don't want to leave anything out. So basically, I was in Reno. Got a lot of Reno stories I know. Today. Okay. Big Reno crowd. Basically, I was... I just read your email address. Uh, I will say that it's something something schizophrenic at gmail.com. No. Okay. So basically, I was in Reno doing God knows what. I was drunk. I couldn't even see a dog in front of me if I wanted to. Insider for Kelly, LOL. What's going on? I It's, it's giving Shout schizophrenic at gmail.com. Okay. Um, and this is maybe 10 years after my surgery, like 2022, I believe. Not sure, TBH. Okay. Keep in mind, I have a penis now. And although it doesn't get hard, it looks very real. Okay. Now, I'm wondering, can you fuck with it? 
and does it feel sensation? Anyway, the Please surgeons pump it up, right? Right? Is that how? Yeah. Is that? Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. The surgeons are so good these days. Shout out to Dr. Tessman. Anywho, I found myself in a bathroom stall on a hot summer's day in Reno. It's not anywhere I'd like to be, honk. I'll tell you that. Honk. Trying to push a mysterious vein back into my penis. Oh, no. It's giving Lee and his... Okay, so this is a great one to end on. Yeah. I know it sounds literally insane, but it happened. Oh, my God. So I don't know why the vein came out. My doctor... Shout out, Dr. Holmes. Dude, okay. A lot of shout outs. A lot of shout outs. A lot outs. of shout outs. We got Kelly, Dr. Popular Holmes. Guy. A lot of free guy. promo, yeah. Uh, said it could have been because I tried pushing out an aggressive fart to be funny. Gabby. Gabby. In front of my baby brother. I, uh, what, okay. Okay. This caused the vein to rupture and become inflamed. So it sounds like why I have hemorrhoids. So I pushed the vein back in after much force and agony. It went back in. I suddenly felt a warm, wet sensation in my asshole. It was the, you guessed it, vein. Okay. To this day, it stays hanging out like a little lost turd. But when I wipe my ass, it goes back in for a while ah! until I fart or piss. Then it comes back out. So every single day. Anyway, thanks for letting me share my literal most embarrassing story. Much love from Reno. Anybody that writes in from Reno, you make me n not yeah. want to go to Reno. It has nothing to do with being an asshole. So here's the it thing. Has no, but, but it, it does have something to do, to do with, with being a having but an asshole. But there's something in yeah. an asshole. Ha hanging but, out of his asshole. Yeah, so yes. is there something hanging out of your asshole? I'm glad that you asked. Yes. Now, here's the thing. Two of you guys wrote in this round with stories that had nothing to do with the prompt in a way it's funny and another way it's fucking dumb as hell but here's the th here's the thing Con congrats on your asshole congrats on eating so the people that wax. did write in without actually adhering to the prompt you guys actually are the fucking assholes yeah you guys are the assholes you guys think you're trailblazers you're just a bunch of fucking sloppy fucking assholes you guys have no charisma one of you has a vein coming out of your literal fucking asshole and join us on patreon get. where we're gonna tell you even more tea we have extra stories to read that we didn't get to on here we yeah look in the right camera though if you're gonna be talking yeah, okay. So me, me, join us on Patreon. We've got extra fun stories. Uh, you get an extra hour a week. Follow us on Instagram, Tea Time 42069. And if you like the show, tell a friend, tell anybody. Uh, tell someone, or send this to someone. Why do I keep crunching ice? My bad. Send this to someone who you think is an asshole and send, uh, send this podcast to someone you want to make an amends with. So fucking true. Subscribe to the Patreon. It really is fun. It's extra. It's so fun. And we have a special surprise for when we get to 1,000. We really do. We had a very big surprise for when we hit 500 and we held to. This is... When we get 1,000 subscribers on Patreon, you guys, uh, you're going to want to be there. Yeah. Because I don't know if you've ever seen an at-home uh, abortion, but you're about to. You're so. about to. I'm getting pregnant just so <laughs> I can get an abortion on and camera. I'm doing it. So you guys... I've she been does not have a medical license, so it's going to be crazy. Yeah. YouTube University is going to come in handy. So you guys head on don't over to Patreon. Don't tell Texas. And Rob DeSantis is a gay lord. Okay, bye, you guys. Love you. Bye.